This is India, the northwest frontier province, 1905, a country of many religions. Men find many reasons for killing each other, greed, revenge, jealousy, or perhaps because they worship God by different names. Rebel fanatics are gathering in the hills. Their objective, to kill a six-year-old boy because he is a prince and the future leader of his people. His father, the Maharaja, has appealed to us, the British, asking us to take his son to the garrison town of Hazirabad and then to send him from there to safety in Delhi.
certainly gave it the right name. Have they held the last train? No, sir. They wouldn't have got away if they had. Damn. We'd better report. Still with me? <laughs> yes. For better or worse. Actually, bar, Dr. Sahib. Troop headquarters go to Portoro. Yes, sir. He'll be all right. Of course. These people have always been soldiers. Sorry, Mr. Peters. There's no more I can do. Captain Scott demands protection Excuse and an immediate me. escort away from his place. I am so glad you managed to get through. We've been greatly worried about you. Mrs. Wyatt, this is Mr. Bridie. How do you do? He does all the work around here. <laughs> his Excellency wanted to see you the moment you arrived. That's all right, Mr. Bridie. I'll report at once. Will you come with me, please, Mrs. Wyatt? You don't seem to realize that I am a British citizen. Look, look. We're all British citizens, Mr. Peters, even if we don't all have papers to prove it. I think it's unforgivable that I wasn't warned about this. I was only at Moran, this a cable office. Yes, but the lines were cut straight through into the ballroom, please. You'll see Lady Wyndham. Look here. I insist. You must take me to the governor at once. I tell you, Mr. Peters, there's nothing he can do about it. The last train's gone. I'm not blaming you, Scott. I don't suppose having Mrs. Wyatt with you made it any quicker. Oh, she did pretty well, sir. Not my idea of a governess. Her husband was a doctor, a fine doctor. Saved the boy's life when he was a baby. The Maharaja never forgot it. We couldn't get him to leave the palace. I didn't expect you would. Well, the important thing now is Prince Kishan. Delhi sent a special order. Get him out at once. Seems I failed. Yes? General Ames, sir. Oh, come in, Charles. Come in. And so you got him here, a bit late in the day. Scott did the best he could. Where's the boy, sir? In the library. Your Highness, I'm glad to welcome you into my home. Thank you, Your Excellency. He's very tired. Mrs. Wyatt, I met your husband in Bombay. This is General Ames. And how do you do? I don't know if they've explained our situation to you. The last train has gone. We held it for His Highness as long as we dared. I promised I'd take him to safety. It's the last thing I promised his father. He'll be quite safe here. What makes you think that? This isn't an ordinary tribal uprising, you know. It's something far bigger. We have no reason to believe so, Mrs. Wyatt. You have reason, I'm telling you. Princes who always fight against each other are now on the same side. Razjad, Hussein, even Rahim. She's perfectly right, sir. If you'd acted on that message I sent three days ago, Prince Kishan would be safe in Delhi by now. I think we are the best judges of such things, Mrs. Wyatt. I disagree. The British never seem to do anything until they've had a cup of tea, by which time it's too late. <laughs> I'm sorry, but that's the way it seems to an American. Please forgive me. Nobody told me you'd come. I was in the hospital. My dear, you might have sent word. Your Highness. Mrs. Wyatt, isn't it? Yes. Naturally, I've heard of you. How do you do? Child looks quite exhausted. Same applies to you, Captain Scott. I'm sure you must be dying for a bath. Oh, I certainly am. Come along, I'll show you to your rooms. Thank you, Captain Scott. You're a good soldier. You'll have to forgive me for speaking my mind. I happen to believe that's what it's for. Hussein, Razjad and Rahim, all fighting together. It's possible she's wrong, sir. I wish I could believe she was. Go on, Scott, go and get some rest. Thank you, sir.
they've captured the railway gates, which means that we're virtually in a state of siege. But can we hold out? That's the point. If we get reinforcements. Suppose we don't. Then we haven't to hope. Prince Kishin must be got out somehow. That dispatch from Delhi made it quite clear that we must save his life, and it was the last thing we did. It may well be the last thing we do, sir. Is Captain Scott here yet? He's waiting, sir. Oh, send him in, please. The boy, of course, is only a figurehead. Well, his family have been a figurehead, if that's the way you wish to put it, for generations. In any case, it's our only chance of restoring order in the province. You think he's as important as that, this one small boy? I know he is. He may be only five years old, but he's the religious and political leader of hundreds of thousands of Hindus. Come in. These rebels are Muslims. If they had managed to kill him as well as his father, if they still managed to kill him, Charles, the Hindus will have no leader. It'll be civil war on a vast scale, worse than the mutiny. All right, Scott. Thank you. Scott, what are the chances of getting the prince through to Kalapur in safety? I'm sorry, Mrs. Wyatt, but I don't think His Excellency requested your presence. Surely the subject under discussion affects me more closely than anybody else in this room. Mrs. Wyatt's perfectly right. Well, can you get him to Kalapur? But I thought the last train had gone, sir. The army doesn't always have to rely on railway engines. What about horses? Not a chance, sir. We had to leave ours or we'd never have got through. They've got a sniper on top of every hill. Yeah, but you did get through, though. Oh, yes, sir, but before they closed in. Yes, that's right enough. Well, I'm afraid the prince will have to stay here. You'll be quite safe, though. We're expecting reinforcements at any moment. I'm beginning to understand British people a little. What you really mean is it won't be safe at all, and reinforcements probably will not get here in time. My dear young lady, you don't understand at all. Oh, no, no, please. It, it's a good way of looking at things, maybe. Just takes a little getting used to. Thank you, Scott. Sir. absolutely no use your waiting, Mr. Peters, no use at all. Well, when can I see him? Tell me when. The governor is very busy. I'm sure he'll see you when he can. I shall most certainly lodge a complaint when I get to Delhi. If you get to Delhi. See, sir? Very plenty of this team. Yes, but is he coming from the right places? That's the point, Gupta. What right places, sir? All right. Victoria is old, I confess that. But she has experience, sir. And when she has experience, nothing can go wrong. It is not the fault of Victoria, sir. I asked them last week. And last month, I asked them 17 times to give me one little day for repairs. But no, like you, they said Victoria is old. Victoria is no good except but for shunting. Nobody understands what to do. Carla Poor is over 300 miles away, you know. What 300 miles? What is 300 miles to this engine, sir? You know what she used to do in the Karachi run? Two times in one week. One week, but two times. Yes, but how many years ago? Look at the boiler, sir. Not even one leak. Not even an inch of steam is escaping from it. And when the boiler is good, the whole engine is good. Look for yourself if not believing Gupta. To be frankly, sir, that is only the piston bearing which is not good. And that is why one half of the team is escaping every day. Are you sure that's all that's wrong? Sir, Gupta has been for 30 years in the railway train service. You think Gupta don't know? No, Gupta. I think you do know. We shall need a coach. Coach, sir, there is no one but uh, that one. But that's broken down. Broken. What about that pair of wheels over there? Will they fit? Yes, sir. They are very fitting wheels. Tell me, Gupta, how many miles per hour could Victoria go pulling just one coach? At least 50 miles, sir. 50? Well, at least, if not 50 miles, then at least 40 miles, sir. And when it is mended, sir, you don't know what speed it will go. It is very speedy. She'll be mended and the coach. Now, the only other problem is coal. We'll never get enough in there. Yes, sir. We need five to six times much more coal than this. Yes, but where can we put it? Have we got a truck or something? Uh, yes, sir. We have got a truck in the shed. Good. I'll get the sappers down here right away. And you can tell them what you want. Sub, you will be never sorry for, for the judgment you are making today. I hope you're right, Gupta. I hope you're right. And get that damn thing fixed at once. Yes, sir, at once. She's like the lady, sub. She shouts too much when she's happy. 
Oh, come on. You must know one way or the other. These rumors must have some foundation. Must they, sir? In my experience, rumor is seldom backed by truth. Surely you can tell us if the prince is here? Of course he's here. That's why they're attacking gentlemen, the town. Gentlemen, gentlemen, when the time comes, you'll be told everything. But why don't you trust us? We could help you, you know. Look here. We know that they burnt the palace to the ground and killed the boy's father. Isn't that I so? I assure you, gentlemen, I know simply nothing. I'm not in a position of authority. Sir John wants you upstairs. Oh, thank heavens. Excuse me. No, but look, just well, the governor up. cannot make a statement yet. Well, just tell us this. Why is the city being attacked? Isn't it because the British patrol? rescue the prince and Isn't brought him it here? Isn't that this entire situation hinges on Prince Kishan? His Excellency has never denied that. This province has been loyal to Prince Kishan's family for hundreds of years. While he's alive, there's absolutely no possibility of a successful well, rebellion. Well, then he is alive and here in government house. The governor right? will make a full statement tomorrow morning. There's no hurry, gentlemen. It's impossible for you to get your dispatches out of the city. The wires have been cut. Well, in that case, why not tell us the truth? Why all the secrecy? Why not? Well, we'll 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 ah, Mr. Peters, you wish to go to Kalapur? Ah, yes. It is essential that I do. I'm expected in Delhi on Friday. You're in luck. The train leaving in um, just over an hour. I hope you can fire those rifles you're so good at selling. The armament industry is impartial. It always has been. Your customers out there aren't impartial, believe me. Will you all sit down, please? Sir John, there's no need for me to go, is there? Friday. Someone has to be officially responsible for the dispatch box. Yes, I know. Now, I've chosen you. Besides, I know that you look after my wife for me. Well, of course. Good heavens, it's not forever. You'll be back. Well, the whole thing's settled. I'd like you to be in the station yard at 11.15. You'll be in Captain Scott's hands. I'll leave it to him to explain what's going to happen. I don't intend to be a schoolmaster, but I'd like to try and explain the position to you. The whole point is, the rebels think that the last train has gone. They do not know that we have another engine. Also, the outer gate on the railway is in their hands, and quite obviously, shut. I, I feel I'm not much of an artist. Now, we hold the inner gate up here. And between these two gates, there's a gradient. Now, Victoria's a wonderful old engine, but she makes an awful lot of noise. Too much, I'm afraid. So although we'll have steam up, we're going to freewheel. We ought to get up quite a speed on this slope, enough to smash through this outer gate before they know what's hit them. Well, that's roughly the plan. Oh, I admit that any number of things can happen. They may even have blocked the railway line to stop reinforcements getting in. But that's something that we'll have to face up to if and when we get to it. So it's true. He is here. Sorry, sir. He must have bribed someone. He came up the back stairs. Would you send this man away? He worries me. Will you please leave the room at once, Mr. Van Leiden? You're going to try to get him out. It's impossible. Come on. All right, Scott. Leave him. All right. Since you've discovered both salient points yourself, there's no need to throw you out. By train, you want to get him out. With the outer gate in enemy hands, what a story. One that's hardly likely to reach the newspapers. No, I suppose not. Unless... Unless I was to go on the train also. Well, it's an idea. I could go on the train. There are a thousand people out there I'd send before you. Of course, of course, you don't like me. Any of you, I know that. I don't know about you, madam. How do you do, by the way? My name is Peter Van Leiden. So, now you have your story and no chance of getting it to your newspaper, perhaps you'll leave the room. It's terrible to think what would happen to your train if all those thousands of people down there knew about it. They'd tear it to pieces rather than let it go without them. Well, of course, the gates to the station are closed and it's all a secret. Nobody could possibly know. <laughs> Mr. Van Leiden, it is just possible that the newspapers of the world should know of our predicament. Oh, no, no, no. You're perfectly right. It's of no importance. Mr. Van Leiden? Yes? You may go on the train. Why, thank you, Sir John. We understand each other. Well, your luggage must be at the yard by 11. I'm going to check the dispatch box. Where do you think you're going? To get my bag, of course. <laughs> yes, why not? That's an excellent idea. Oh, I see. If I go now, I miss that train, is that it? Yes, Mr. Van Leyden, that's it. Oh, well, in that case, I shall have to travel light. As a journalist, I'm used to it. Look, I couldn't wish for better company. The decline and fall of an empire. Roman, not British. You haven't given me a chance to speak to you, John. There's nothing really left to discuss, my dear. You should be getting our things ready. They are ready, but I'm not going. This little boy is important, isn't he? Very, very important. And yet you're prepared to take this risk with him. And it is a tremendous risk. We all realize that. We can't hold out here. Isn't that it? We have every hope. Hope? Yes, everybody hopes. But... You're going. No, I'm not. I'm staying here with you. Oh, my dear, can't you see? I really have no right to get on the Right! Track. Right! 
Haven't I my rights? Am I governor of a province for nothing? But I can't be so selfish. I'm being selfish, my dear. Don't you understand? For once, I'm being selfish. You're going on the train, and that's that. That's that, my dear. Your luggage has been loaded. Will you board the train, please? Sub G stick high, Dr. Asai. G sub. You've got a complete set of tools in there. Crowbars, pickaxes. Anything can happen on this trip. Everything you can think of. I asked for these mountings to be fixed. They're firing too high. I'm sorry, Bill. There simply wasn't time. Well, let's hope they keep their distance. Good luck. Thanks. Cheer up, Mr. Bridie. I'm sure those gates aren't as strong as they look. It's not that. It's... Well, I'd rather stay behind. Hazarabad doesn't seem to me a very good place to be right now. It's my home. When I shut up my little house a few minutes ago, I... I don't know, I had a feeling I'd never see it again. Satisfied? You trying to kill us all? Hmm. We're trying to save you. The British are incurably optimistic. But you're British, Mr. Peters. My passport's British. You really think we can get through? Would I be trying it if I didn't think so? Of course you would. You've been ordered to try it. <laughs> get aboard, quickly. How's the pressure, Gupta? Pressure is not very forcing to go yet, sir. But it will be very forcing in a soon moment. Oh, uh, do let me. We'll be off in a few moments. Uh, will you all lie down on the floor, please? It may be a little uncomfortable, but I can assure you it's absolutely necessary, and it won't be for long. Uh, Mr. Bridie, turn that lamp out, please. All being well, the train won't have to stop on this trip. But if it does, don't look out of the windows, don't leave the carriage, but put the shutters up and wait for me to come along and report. Right. How's she now, Gupta? Now it is forcing, sir. But it will be ready to go only in a very, very soon moment now. I'll lie down right here. Oh, Mrs. White. Well, there's much more room here. Well, I'm quite happy where I am, thank you. Never mind, Mr. Peters. The Americans are by tradition isolationist. Now it is terribly ready, sir. <laughs> terribly ready. <laughs> is everybody all right? Good. We're off. For better or worse. Ready to move off, sir. Good luck, Captain Scott. Thank you, sir. Close the fire door, Gupta.
Sorry, it's a Lee Enfield, the rival firm. Ten rounds. I've never used one of these things before in my life. They're for killing people with. Why do fighting men pretend to despise those that make and sell them their tools? A soldier's job, Mr. Peters, is not primarily to kill. No? We have to keep order, to prevent your customers from tearing each other to pieces. You really believe that? Oh, I wouldn't say it if I didn't. No, I don't believe you would. What I dislike about you chaps is that you sell your stuff without discrimination. To the other side, you mean? You think we should be like God, only on the side of the British. But the Germans and the Japanese and the Hottentots, they all think God's on their side. And so do these rebels. They're only children. Would you give this to a child? They are not children. They're grown men. Uneducated men, I grant you, but fighting for freedom, for the freedom of their country. You see, well, you may feel differently about it when you get one of your own bullets in the stomach. If you think I'm ashamed that these are my merchandise, you're wrong. Men make wars, not guns. Before there were guns, men used swords, spears, stones, blocks of wood, anything they could lay their hands on. Oh, go away, I'm sleepy. Yeah. Oh, can't you shoot either? Oh, yes, I can shoot. Newspaper men have to be able to protect themselves sometimes. I'm not surprised if all their reports differ from the truth as much as yours do. Oh, you read my reports. I'm honored. Of course I do. But truth, you see, is like, uh, like God, not always on the side of the British. It pleases you to mock us, Mr. Van Leiden. We're used to that. Half the world mocks us. And half the world is only civilized because we have made it so. Good for you, ma'am. Excellent. Excellent. Already we split into factions. Our little train, trundling across this desert, is like our little world, trundling through space. Mr. Peters here will sell us guns, and we can fight each other. Delighted. Men are really absurd. You stand around arguing, and who does all the work? We do, as usual. Oh, now, wait a minute. This journey is quite dangerous enough as it is. Well, Arizona is in England, you know. From the time I was 13, my father never let me out of the house without one of these. <laughs> could I have one? I don't suppose I could hit anybody, but I could frighten them to death. Here you are, Mr. Brady. Oh, I've never shot anyone in my life, I'm afraid. Well, with a bit of luck, you won't have to. Come to think of it, I once won a cigarette case or something with one of these on Brighton Pier. You did better than me. All I ever won was a bag of sweets. Uh, yeah, 15 uh, rounds. Oh, thank you very much. I should think Gupta and the sergeant are about ready for one of these. Would you mind, Captain? With pleasure. Dr. Saib, Charlie. Her bunny's up. Oh, tank, Tom. My tank. This very nice engine, Tom. Your friends did not admit, eh? <laughs> yeah, you may need this. Gun for Gupta? Oh, no, Tom. Gupta only engine driver. Very good engine driver. 30 years on the railway train service. Yes, but it may be a question of this or no more years in the railway service. No, Tom. Gupta Indian. Indian to kill Indian? Not very good. Maybe Tom thinks Gupta foolish. No, I don't think you're foolish. If other man has other religion, why should Gupta mind, sir? Gupta don't mind. Sir, sir, head train hot over here. Pull up, Gupta, pull up. Sir, are they alive? Shut us up. And please, don't any of you leave the train. No trouble, I hope. Nothing for you to worry about, Mr. Bradley. Kumar! Kumar is that how? Gupta Sahib? Gupta? If you hear firing, get back as quickly as possible. Don't wait for us. Yes, sir. Gupta will do that. But Saab also to look after himself.
I'm glad to see it makes you sick. I thought I told you to stay in that train. I'm a newspaper reporter. It is my duty to look. To look and to report. All right, Ben Lydon. Go on, have a look. Have a good look. And see what happens when the British aren't around to keep order. Keep order? You? <laughs> you divide. You set Muslim against Hindu. You divide? In order to rule, that's what you do. The Muslims were fighting the Hindus for hundreds of years before we came to India. And will you know it? Now go on, get back on that train. All right, all right, I'm going. I've seen enough. You call this keeping order? Kumar! Pichi Pichi Ao! Hey, Kumar, my dad girl. Kishan, do stop playing with Come along, Kishan. Have something to eat, my boy. It's dangerous to stay here so long. Thank you. What does Captain Scott think he's doing? He's supposed to be protecting us. What is it? What's holding us up? What's happened? Well, come along. We can't all go and look. Don't. Well, please, Mr. Van Leiden, tell us what's going on out there. It's the refugee train. The refugee train? It ought to be miles. Well, what's it doing here? What's it stop for? Something wrong? Those poor people. Can we help? Is there anything we can do? 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 No, there is nothing you can do. Any of you. Except, except go home. And, and, and keep order at home and stay there. For good. I'm sorry. There's nothing we can do. They're all dead. But, but there were hundreds of people on that train. How do you know they're all dead? You, you haven't had time to look. We're moving on. But there may be somebody alive. We cannot go without being sure. Please believe me, Mrs. Wyatt. I've seen all this before. When those devils do a job, they do it properly. Gupta, move on. Hold it! Mrs. Wyatt, please get back on the train. Mrs. Wyatt! You can hardly court-martial her. She's not one of your soldiers. And neither are we. If the Saab permits, then Gupta to try bringing back the Mem Saab? No, Gupta. Let the Mem Saab find out for herself. <laughs> Come on, we'll move up.
Let's get on the train. was a chance in a million. He was completely hidden. The mother had covered him with her body. Nobody Please could. don't make excuses. I was wrong and that's that. Where's Kishan? I thought it better that he, um, shouldn't see the, um... We must find somewhere to put the little blighter. I think I have just the thing. Come and have a look. That was a very courageous thing to do, my dear. It's a funny thing that the fellas always used to pull my leg about this case. There goes Bridie with the baby, they used to say. Looks as if they were right, doesn't it? Now, what do you think of that? A perfect cough for him, eh? Put in some of these to make it soft. Yes. How's that? That's excellent. One life saved <laughs> and thousands lost. Give him a pillow for luck, Lady Wyndham. <laughs> Laskar, the driver of that engine was friend of mine, Saab. Thirty years on the railway train service. He had four small children, Saab. You know, Saab, sometimes I want to get hold of my people, all my people, and beat their heads together to put little sense into them. Come on, Gupta, what's the matter with her? She's hardly moving. She can do better than this. Victoria is old, Saab. She's totally doing her best. Well, her total best isn't good enough. But there is no more of this team. Then you must find some. Gupta! You can't stop wherever you like. You're under army orders, no? No army orders. She cannot do it. She will not do it. You promised me she'd get to Kalapur. Yes, she will go to Kalapur, but not with this. Is that all? Now, don't you ever frighten me like that again. We'll soon get that off. Dr. Saeb? Yes, who span allow? Acha sahab. Our dough crowbar. Acha sahab. We're stopping for a few minutes to do some minor repairs. Well, we seem to stop every two or three miles. I don't know when Captain Scott proposes to get us to Kalapur. You'll get through there all right, Mr. Peters. That's all you need worry about. Uh, Mr. Van Leiden, would you mind passing me my case? It's just on the rack there above your head. Yes, that's it. Thank you. I think the boys on the end you could do with a drop, too. I'll bring it. I'm sorry. About the baby? You needn't be. It was a fine thing to do. That's not why I did it. You'd have to go too far back with me to understand. I think I do understand. You were married to a doctor. A very fine one, from all accounts. A man who died trying to save people's lives. It's impossible to be married to a man like that without living up to his ideals. I'm right, am I not? You're right, but for all the wrong reasons. I didn't live up to them. I think I hated them. 
I hated the squalor and the dirt and the place where we had to go and live. I hated his being a doctor at all. I even left him once and went back to the States. One does learn, though, even if it is a bit late in the day. Does that make sense? Yes, it makes sense. I may be one of the brutal and licentious soldiery, but I'm not a complete blockhead, you know. He would have been as surprised as you were to see me getting on that train. Anyway, how is young India? Oh, fine. How are we going to feed it? Mr. Bridie has a clever idea to, to do with a leather glove. If we had a leather glove? Well, Lady Wyndham has. She has everything tucked away in that handbag of hers. Smelling salts, playing cards, iodine, bandages, even the latest edition of the London Times. Now, how about that drink for the boys? And I could do with a good cup of tea. Coffee? Or would that bring the Empire crashing down around us? Tea. You were happy in Hazardabad, weren't you, Mr. Bridie? Oh, yes, it's my home. I've lived there for 21 years. I was happy there, too. It's a little bit different for you, Lady Wyndham, if you don't mind my saying so. I'm only a half-sister in England, lives just outside Birmingham. We've never been very close. Don't think her husband likes me much. So really, you see, well, I'm alone. It's not so very different for me, Mr. Bridie. I have a few relations in England, of course, more than just one sister, but... I even had to leave my old dog behind. It's not much of a dog, I dare say, but... Well, he was mine. I had to leave my husband behind. Oh, Lady Wyndham, I... I... Sorry, I didn't mean... You've had your home in yeah. one place for 20-odd years. And for 20-odd years, I haven't had a home. Just a succession of big houses that haven't been very easy to run. My husband has been my home. Yes. Wherever I, he is. I'm sorry, Laidman. Please, how could I have been so thoughtless? Please forgive me. It's... Don't be silly, Mr. Pratt. Can I get you some water, Lady Wyndham? How about a drop of whiskey? There's some in the van. Lady Wyndham, what's the matter? There's nothing like a woman in tears to stop a man feeling sorry for himself. Mr. Bridie, he certainly doesn't seem sorry for himself now. Your husband will be all right, I'm sure he will. Here we are, Lady Wyndham. Oh, oh dear me. <laughs> that was a near one. Oh, thank you, that's better. It's rather strong. Some more water. Gracious, I'm not complaining. Oh, Mrs. Wyatt, what about you? A little... Oh, oh, no, thank you. I'm supposed to be fixing tea. Leave it to me. Now, you see, he's quite happy now that he's doing something for somebody else. You've been married, my dear. You should know that much about men. Maybe a doctor's wife doesn't see enough of her husband to find out. He was one of his patients, you know. So thin and wasted like a starved little frog. <laughs> Look at him now. Yes, sir. Doctor! Fax him. There. Yeah. I beg your pardon. They've blown up the line. Shut us up, please. Of course, it may be nothing to do with us at all. It may be something that happened a few days ago to prevent reinforcements getting in. What are we going to do? We can't just sit here. Can't we? We certainly can't go forward. Going back would appear to be out of the question. It really seems to be a most uh, interesting uh, military problem. Or perhaps just a matter of common sense. Now, let's see. The Duffadar will have to stand guard with the Maxim. That leaves six men. Now, we can replace that blown section with a new length of rail taken from behind the train. But don't be silly. It's impossible. No, it's not. It's been done before. Thank you, Mr. Bridie. Now, this is what we're going to do. We'll move the train right forward to the damaged rail. Surely it would be safer to leave the ladies here, in the tunnel. Yes, but that will give us 200 yards of open country to cover. And anything can happen out there. We may need all the cover we can get. All right. Any more questions? Good. Let's get on with it. Oh, dear me. I hope there's some more of these somewhere. I have an idea a cup of tea might come in handy.
Well, it looks clear enough. But as Mr. Peters so wittily put it, we just can't sit here. Look! What is it, Kishen? What did you see? Something moved. Are you sure? Where? Show me. Up there. But what was it? What did you see? Was it a man? I don't know. <laughs> You'll have me doing it next. Don't come out like Corleone, and then make it quick. Turnkeys, crowbars. Excuse me, Lady Wyndham. I should advise you two gentlemen to do the same. I think it might be pretty hot out there. A master of understatement. It's an old English pastime, didn't you know? All right, gentlemen, out. Come on, come on. Good for you, Mr. Bridey. Armament merchants first. Come on, come on. If there is anyone out there, this is the moment they've been waiting for. Why not send one of the Indians? Mr. Peters. Going, sir. This one yours. This one yours, sir. Oh no, 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 that way, sir. This way. Van huh. Leiden, for heaven's sake! Don't you want posterity to know what a resourceful hero you are? We want help now. You know what you sound like? The Empire Builder in distress. I'm coming. I really find it quite pleasant to be out of the train, Captain Scott. Ah. You wait till you start lugging rails about. <laughs> Strangle that cooker! I thought Victoria was on our side. Quick as you can, gentlemen. Leave the shadow alone, Kishen. Come and sit over here, Kishen, and we'll build a card house, shall we? I'll show you how. Now, gather up the cards first.
start on the second floor, shall we? That's right. Now, you put your wall up there. This is now a most intriguing situation, Captain Scott. No rail in front and no rail behind. What happens if you are attacked? Trust you to think of that one. Now, we've got two floors. Now, we'll try and get another, shall we? Oh, dear, we shall have to start that one again, won't we? Look, there it is. A heliograph. What does that light mean? It means they found us. Ought we to open fire? It's a waste of time at this range. We'll have to work fast. Come on. Sit down here, Kishan. Why? Just do as you're told, darling. Right in this corner. Back to the coach. I'll put the two last bolts in the other end. Father God, don't be careless to save your Indian son.
matter, old fella? You been hit? Yes, sir. But he was careful to hit me only at the foot of the leg. And a little bit in the arm also, sir. That is all. Oh, we soon fix you up. Another couple of miles will be done on the plane. We can relax a bit, I hope. Yes, sir. And Gupta will have to teach you to drive Victoria, sir. Can you keep your eyes open a few moments? I want to see how they are on the coach. Yes, sir. You did well. Pressure's dropping. Victoria wants water, sir. How far is the next station? Jamshara. 20 miles distant. Will she make it? Oh, yes, sir. She will make it. But slowly, slowly. How's that? That's very all right. Saab is the engine driver now. This time tomorrow, we'll have you in hospital, Gupta. Oh, no, sir. Gupta does not like to live in hospital. Why not? Those nurses there, sir. They are not women. Oh, you'd be surprised. She's going too quick, sir. The compression is losing. Good. Victoria talks to me. I understand her language. Well, it's just as well, because I can't understand a word she says. <laughs> no, this is ridiculous. It would be quicker to walk. There's nothing to stop you walking, Mr. Peters. I don't know why the British buy these things. Our models are twice as good. Twice as good? Oh, I see. Uh, you mean it can kill twice as many people? Exactly. And twice as fast. It's an ingenious piece of mechanism. But this thing... Won't fire again? No, not a hope. Now this you might call a, an ingenious piece of mechanism. It's a lifesaver too, not a life destroyer. I'm surprised to find you a sentimentalist. Most ruthless men are sentimental, I don't know why. Me ruthless? What makes you say that? The things you write, crude sensationalism. I'm very flattered that you're such, a, such an attentive reader of my work. Reading newspapers is like everything else in life. One must take the good with the bad, the informed and the shoddy. Thank you. You do an awful lot of harm. You know that, don't you? Sometimes I think you're even inciting violence. The cure for some diseases is often violent and painful. War is like that. But well, it's sometimes the only cure. I'm sorry. I was just quoting from one of my shoddy articles. Is the engine driver still sitting out there in the sun? Yes. That wound will dry up superficially, and then heaven knows what will happen in this climate. When can I drive the engine? Later. Tomorrow, perhaps. Will you ask Captain Scott? No, you ask him yourself. No, you. He likes you. <laughs> Does he now? Perhaps you had better take this out to him. It might help to keep the sun off a little. I'll take it. Captain Scott! Lady Wyndham says the driver must keep that wound out of the sun. You see, I told you she has everything. There you are, old Gupta. I hope none of your fellow engine drivers see you looking like this. No, sir. They will be calling me Lady Gupta. <laughs> All set for Henry Regatta. Who is Henry Regatta, sir? <laughs> he says, who is Henry Regatta? It's not a who, Gupta. It's an occasion. When all the most saib saibs in England get themselves together, dress up in a lot of silly little hats, and row themselves up and down a river. That is very funny. Why do they do that? Why? Why, indeed? You may well ask. I don't know. It's one of the things I joined the army to get away from. Pressure, sir. Oh! There's an attractive little song that goes with it. ta da 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 And a hay harvest breeze Blade on the feather Shade off the trees Swing, swing together with your bodies between your knees. 
swing, swing together with your bodies between your knees. Swing, swing together with your bodies between your knees. All together now. Ta da 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 da. Ta da 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 da. Laid on the feather, shade off the trees, and the swing, swing. Oh, mind your business, up. I'll have to stop her, Gupta. No, sir. If you stop her now, she will never start again. Then we'll take a chance. We'll give them a short burst of the Maxim as we go through. If there's anyone there, they'll know we mean business. Dr. Saab, come it off. Keep down everybody in the coat. Come on. Maxim Gassar, settle. They certainly made a shambles of this place. Saab, to please see if they have not spoiled the well of water and also if the pump is working. Well, if it isn't, it's a long walk to Kalapur. Dr. Saad, chat kyu pa jau. Koob deko. Jaldi, jaldi. It's all right, everybody. It's quite safe to come down now. Uh, Mr. Peters, Van Leiden, search about for some wood, please, and take it to that pump house. I'm going to try and light that boiler. Careful, Tav. Careful. Uh -huh. If I can get that pump to work, we're going to get some water. But we've got to get it from there over to the engine. So if you'd all look around for something to carry it in, it would help a great deal. Oh, and Mr. Van Leiden, unfortunately, your survival depends on ours. So if you don't mind, some wood. How are you, Gupta? I am not very well, Mem Saab. But I will be very well in a very soon moment now. You really should be in the coach where we can make you more comfortable. Oh, no, Mem Saab. Gupta must stay with his engine till Scott Saab becomes engine driver. And that will also be in a very soon moment. Don't go far, Kishan. Stay near the train. Uh, Mem Saab, uh, you have first time come to Gupta's engine. You must not go back empty-handed. Gupta must give you something. Indian custom. Bucket for water, Mim Saab. Thank you. Put it down there. If this works, we'll probably get some water. And if it doesn't? Then we'll stay here until they kill us. It would be preferable, then, that it works. It's all right, I think. Stand clear of that wheel. It'll make mincemeat of you. Come on, old girl. Good. Outside. Keep that fire going, Ben Light. There it is. Fill your bucket. Come on. Ow, mother's dead. Dr. Saab. Gupta, where does the old girl like to take her drink? She drinks upon the roof, Saab. Right. Oh, 
Over here. Kishin, you're all wet. Go over there and take your shoes off and play. Everybody can if they have to. Does that mean the armament business is hard work? Good heavens, no. People are always fighting each other. We are the only salesmen who are actually pursued by our customers. I have had to work hard, though, at other jobs. Oh, what other jobs, Mr. Peters? Oh, for many years I devoted myself to the business of marrying a rich woman. <laughs> no, truly, it's very, very difficult. Did you succeed? <laughs> With my child? Of course I did. But you know, it's a funny thing. A man can keep a woman, but a woman can't keep a man. Poor Vera, I ended up by despising her. Myself too, come to that. But it wasn't a good job anyway. Too much hard work. looking after him. Come on, back on the train. You too. All aboard, please. Left off. Beat you out. Right, Gupta. Kalapur. Kalapur, sir.
Not too good. It's a bit of a fever, I think. We shouldn't have let him stay out so long. Good heavens, who's driving the train? The gunner, ma'am. Is that safe? I think so. Victoria is most intelligent. <laughs> Whiskey? Oh, why not? First comes with the setting of the sun. How true. Cheers. Have a whiskey? No, thank you. Oh, come on. Do you good. I... I don't drink. What? Are you a journalist? It's not an essential part of the job. No? You surprise me. Oh, come on. To show we're all very good friends. I said no, didn't I? Mr. Van Leiden, are you a Muslim by any chance? Why should you say that? <laughs> because you won't touch alcohol and because this morning you were most unwilling to give Lady Wyndham her case. Her pigskin case. Yes, I am a Muslim, it so happens. A Dutch Muslim? That's a bit unusual, isn't it? But not so unusual, no. Many Dutch Indonesians are Muslims. Are you an Indonesian, Mr. Van Leiden? Or half Indonesian? Yes, I am. I don't see why an Indonesian should be quite so anti-British. Indonesian, Dutch, British, Christian, Muslim, what has it got to do with it? I merely sympathize with small minorities fighting the aggression of big nations. In any case, the accidents of my birth have nothing to do with you. Any of you. You're perfectly right, I'm happy to say. You're being very slow, young man's now. A very ill-natured fellow. Snap! Cigar? No, thank you. You should not be so touchy. There's no harm in being a Muslim. One would think there was, from your attitude. Not all Muslims are in sympathy with the rebels. Thank you very much. But some are. Oh, are you? Me? What are you driving at? I'm no Muslim. Muslim or no Muslim, after all, you are the man who sold them the arms. In my opinion, people in glass houses should mind their own bloody business. And I mean bloody. How dare you? <laughs> you should not be so touchy. I think I'll change my mind. I'll have that cigar after all. Getting some sleep. Pass me over those scissors, will you? He's a lot tougher than he looks. <laughs> Anything else? Yes. Put a little water in here, would you? You're the first American woman I've met. Are they all like you? Why? How do I seem? Well, should we say a little bit more independent than most? Oh, is, is that the tactful English way of saying you think I'm pig-headed? Let me ask you something. Why did you join the army? Is that such an odd thing to do? It's a crazy thing to do. Come on, tell me why. Well, let me see now. When I was eight years of age, my dear old grandfather gave me a box of tin soldiers. <laughs> You've been playing soldiers ever since. If you like to put it like that, yes. Don't you ever, ever feel it's rather a waste? Well, after all, we were all put on earth with minds of our own. My hand draws over to somebody else. Why can't a soldier have a mind of his own, too? Or can he? And he spends his life taking orders from other people, whether he agrees with them or not, like a machine. We're not machines. We're human beings, like everybody else. A soldier can never be that, not in the fullest sense. Human beings have responsibilities. But don't you call this train load a responsibility? Oh, not yours. The governor ordered you to get us to Kalapur. If you fail, the responsibility's his. Well, <laughs> thank you for that. Thank you very much indeed for that most comforting thought. It's not that I'm not grateful to you for saving me. I, I am. I told you that. But that doesn't alter my opinion of soldiers. Are you one of these emancipated women we're having so much trouble with at home? Oh, it might be. What's wrong with that? Oh, they're just a lot of cranks. 
A woman who has a mind of her own is a crank. Well, I think men who spend their lives obeying orders are cranks. Look, you just can't go around doing what you like in life. My job is to obey orders. Like an animal in blinkers. I do so agree with you, Mrs. Wyatt. Have you been there? If you... I'd like to punch you on the end of your interfering nose. No, actually, I was going through for a smoke. Uh, never mind. The front observation platform is now vacant. Thank you. Mr. Van Lan, how about a cup of tea before we turn in? Thank you. <clears throat> you know, uh, I think Mr. Peters was wrong to say the things he said to you just now. Mr. Peters is perfectly entitled to think and say what he likes. It's of no importance to me. I didn't mind. You looked as if you did. You still do. Do I? Is there any sugar? Oh, no, silly. Back to the footplate. Yes. Good night, Ben Lydon. Good night. Good night, Mr. Briley. Good night, Captain Scott. Don't stay out there too long. Must get some sleep. Good night, ma'am. Try and get some rest. Is that enough? Oh. You know, I, I've got... Uh, a lot of friends back home in Hazirabad who are uh, who are of mixed blood. Don't be shy, Mr. Briley. They are half-breeds. So am I. There's nothing to be ashamed of. No, that's just what I tell them. They're charming people. I do hope they're all right. They're charming to you because you are charming to them. No, no, that's nothing to do with it. They're my friends. I told you, they're my friends. Mm. Half-breeds in this country, Mr. Briley, are hungry for friends. They spend most of their time worrying about what they are and what they are not. I think it's degrading. I'm not ashamed to be what I am. I think I'm all right. I have a certain amount of power, you know. I don't think power has anything to do with it, Mr. Van. Oh, yes, it has. It is vital. If people know that you can hit back, they're careful how they treat you. You mustn't be angry with her. She's one of the old school. I'm not angry. In fact, I, uh, I rather admire her. She's uh, proud, tough, ruthless, unashamedly patriotic, a real pain in the neck. <laughs> I was same old as your highness. Uh, my father taught me. He was also engine driver like your father is king. Don't you want a bigger engine now? Oh, no, his highness. I am in the habit of Victoria now. Bigger engines only bring troublesomeness. When people become unsatisfactory with small engines, they want bigger engines. But one morning, there are no bigger engines than the very big ones, and people again become unsatisfactory. So why not have small engines and be satisfactory? Gupta, you... Your English is hopeless. <laughs> yes, yes, His Highness. But I'm doing practice with Scott Saab now. His English is very hopeful. Come along, Kishan. We're stopping. Oh, yes. It's the Kupra Bridge. It's almost five years since I was here last on my way home from Leeds. Quite a contrast.
Doctor! This time it's the bridge. They've blown it up. Or a section of it anyway. I have to ask you to get down and walk for a bit. Walk? But if they've blown it up, what are they going to walk on? Well, luckily, these chaps aren't too clever with explosives. And the force has all gone down instead of up. We're still left with a couple of rails. They're a bit bent, but they're still there. The trouble is, there's nothing supporting them. They're going to walk along a rail with nothing to hold on to? Well, it's only two or three yards. It won't be easy and it won't be pleasant. But I think you can do it. But Captain Scott, isn't there a chance that this might be another ambush? A chance, ma'am, yes, but I don't think so. I don't think this was designed for us. I think it happened two or three days ago. All right, you say we can walk across. Well, what happens then? Yes, if the supports have gone, it won't take the weight of a train, will it? I think they were trying to stop the heavier traffic, ammunition trains, refugee trains, things like that. I think there's enough left to bear the weight of old Victoria. Anyway, it's, it's a risk we'll have to take. There's no alternative. And if it is an ambush? Well, I'll send the two soldiers on the head with the Maxim gun, and they can give us covering fire if necessary. Come down on the bridge as soon as you're ready. Let me have the baby now, please. Thank you. Well, that, of course, is the army. I don't expect you'll find it as easy as all that. Now, any volunteers? Good few, Mr. Peters. Now, don't look down. Right. Good. Ma'am. Step up on the rail. Don't look down. Good for you, ma'am. Mr. Bradley? Now, sir, on the rail. Don't look down. Oh, dear. I can't move. It's all right, sir. <laughs> Good for you. <laughs> Go on. Captain Scott won't let you fall. Look, I'll show you. If I can do it, I know you can. Don't look down. Good girl. I'll cross, and you pass the boy over, Van Leiden. Thanks. Right, let's have him. Now then, look at me, young fella. Keep looking at me. Now hold him out. Reach out. Right, hold him out, Van Leiden. Well, reach out with him, man. Look at me, young fella. That's a good boy. Don't look down. Come on, man. Stretch out. Peters, get my waist. Hold him out. Well, what's the matter with you? Stretch him out. Go on. Grab the boy.
What the devil do you think you're doing? Please. <laughs> Please, nothing. You deliberately held that boy short. What was that? You nearly dropped him. And you have the audacity to blame me? That's how you wanted it to look. Don't be childish. And what went on in that pump house with that ruddy great flywheel? Pump house? Pump house? What, what is he talking about? Let go of me. Oh, no, Mr. Van Leiden. I'm not letting you go. You're a Muslim, aren't you? I was wondering when you'd bring that up against me. And the people who want to kill that little boy are Muslims, too. Come on! Tell the officer! I'm putting you under close arrest. You do that, Captain Scott, and I'll... I'll put you into every newspaper from Calcutta to Berlin. That's a risk I'll have to take. You disappoint me. I... I really thought you had a brain in spite of being a professional soldier. Yes, I am a professional soldier. And I am a professional journalist. I warn you, you are overstepping your mark. I'm a... I'm a free journalist. My... my job is to report. And my job is to get that boy to Kalapur in safety. Man's a maniac. The sun has gone to his head. Oh, madam, don't you hold that boy around the neck or he'll say you're trying to strangle him. Come on. What's up, me, Pakro? All right, Captain Scott. You seem to be determined to get yourself into the headlines. But you'll regret this. Look, aren't we mentioning things? I personally dislike this man. Please, please get off the bridge, all of you. There may be a dozen rifles aimed at you at this moment. Now, please, leave the bridge. Well, anyone can slip on a rail three inches wide. There's no proof that he's a murderer. Surely you didn't have to arrest him. We're all together in the coach. We could have watched oh, it. Oh, for heaven's sake. Look, I could be wrong, very wrong. But we can't take a chance with this boy's life. Now, please, leave the bridge. Please take him off the bridge. Will it take the waiter? Are you sure? Of course I'm sure. It's a hobby of mine, driving trains over blown-up bridges. Well, stop behaving like an overgrown schoolboy. Well, how do you want me to behave? You want me to tell you there isn't a hope in hell? I've got to do this job, remember? This time it's my responsibility. I don't know whether it's a human problem or a military one. You can work that out. Peters. Your best chance is to take it fast. Nonsense. The vibration will break up the structure. Look at it. Oh, I disagree. There's less dynamic weight on any one girl well, than who's you... doing this? You or me? All right. Well, here we go. Careful, sir. Stand by, Gupta. This is it. Good driving, Tom. Oh, Tom. 
I'm sorry about this, Mr. Van Leiden. I feel sure there'll be a satisfactory explanation. We made it! Let her out! Captain Scott? Yes, ma'am? I want you to know that I think you acted very wisely over Mr. Van Leiden. <laughs> well, if I didn't, I'm in the soup. Kupta? Yes, sir? Is the old girl ready to go, or does she need a breather? She's not a young man like you, sir. She needs some steam now to go. How long? Oh, not more long than five minutes. Right. Hello. Isn't this carrying the celebrated dislike of soldiers a little too far? What do you mean? Well, looking so blooming miserable just because I didn't end up as mincemeat down in the valley. <laughs> now you look like an abandoned woman. I always thought you were. Oh, well, I hope there aren't any more bridges. You know, you really had me scared. Well, I can promise you I was scared myself. Are you sure about Mr. Van Leiden? I, I mean, won't you get into a lot of trouble if you're wrong? Wouldn't you like to see me drummed out of my regiment? Paraded before the troops? Medals torn off my manly bosom? I should have thought that'd be just your cup of tea. <laughs> they don't really do all that, do well, they? Well, of course they do. Then my, then my best friend calls on me in my quarters, hands me a loaded revolver and says, Carruthers, it's the only way out for a gentleman. <laughs> Catherine. Thank you, Captain Scott. William Charles Willoughby. Take your pick. Oh, Willoughby, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear me, it does seem a pity. I mean, I know Mr. Van Leiden's a difficult man and we've had our differences, but after all we've been through, it would have been nice to have finished the journey together. <laughs> Hmm? Oh, I'm sorry I'm so slow. Do you think they've tied him up? You really must stop worrying about Mr. Van Leiden. I'm sure Captain Scott knows what he's doing. Yes, of course, but it seems a bit extreme to me, shutting him up like that. After all, what can he do? Well, the idea of shutting him up is so that we don't have to find out what he can do, Mr. Friday. I don't suppose he's even got anything to read. <laughs> well, what in heaven's name does reading have to do with it? Captain Scott thinks he tried to kill Kishan. What else can he do but lock him up? Oh, Mrs. Wyatt, it is clear that you do not understand the British mentality. While Van Leiden was a Dutch journalist, Mr. Bryde here disliked him intensely. <clears throat> but as soon as he discovered that he was a half-breed, Mr. Bryde began, well, felt a certain sympathy for him. Now that you all suspect him of being anti-British, fanatic, and maybe a murderer, Mr. Bryde will start crusading for him. He has become an underdog, and the British love underdogs. Mm. It's better than kicking them, Mr. Peters. That tells us how much steam is in the boiler. Boom, boom, boom.
Thanks, honey. Thank you. So it is true, Mr. Van Nyden. Stand up where I can see you. All of you. The boy, too. He's not here, he's out on the engine. You, call the boy. Call him. No, don't. If you think you can get away with this, I can and I will. There won't be any witnesses. Even if you succeed, there's still the other soldier. He controls the engine. He will obey this. Call that boy. No. All right, don't call him. He won't stay out there forever. If you must massacre us all, you'd better first remove your safety catch. Kick back. Presently. When? When I say so. Yeah, have a go. You were set right from the beginning to do this. <laughs> you find that strange? The man's mad. Not madder than you are. Like you, ladies and gentlemen, I believe in my country. You are Dutch. Oh, I'm Indian. My mother was Dutch. I'm just one of those half-breeds you despise so much. What does killing us prove? That you're not a half-breed? Proves that I'm a true Muslim. If I care enough to fight, maybe to die for my faith. Or a country that will be all Muslim. A free country and I will belong there. Are you capable of understanding that? You're a criminal. You belong in jail. I find the uh, moral indignation of an armament peddler rather touching. Look! Mrs. Wyatt, that lamp, turn it up. We will be passing through more tunnels, and I would hate to leave you all standing in the dark. Do as I say. मासूम बच्चों का खून करना ही देश सेवा है तो मैं गद्दार ही अच्छा गुप्ता व्हाई डिडंट यू गो ही वुड हैव किल्ड यू मैम साहब यस आई आई वुड हैव किल्ड यू मैम साहब never going to walk through that door. Neither is Captain Scott. Time will tell. I'm going to scream. Long before they get here, I'm going to warn them. You're afraid, aren't you? It can't be easy to kill a child in cold blood. And the refugee train. When you came back from it, you were as sick as any of us. It was a... A useless slaughter. Isn't killing always useless? Has the taking of a human life ever solved any problems? It has, and it will again. I, 
I like children as much as you do, but that one boy, my God, don't you understand? That one boy, he's a, he's a symbol. He's a, an outworn tradition that stands between my country and freedom. Well, I shall kill him. I must kill him in order to save the lives of thousands. One life will be lost, one life, one Indian life lost, but thousands will be saved. Stand back, stand back from that door. Tea time, young fella. Can I come back later and drive the engine? Of course, I promised you, didn't I? Tickly? <laughs> <laughs> Any box? <laughs> Doctor, <laughs> don't train to love. Team pressure cover down is in echo. Dirty hand. Losing much blood. Moo, is there a scratch? You'd hurt yourself more falling off a bicycle. You're quite wrong, Mr. Peters. Mr. Bridie will have to take very great care. Now, what you need next is a good stiff drink, and then I'll get that arm into a sling for Thank you. Thank you, Lady Wyndham. You are kind. Where's Mr. Van Leiden? Uh, he, uh, he got off. He got off? Oh, dear. You know, I couldn't help liking Mr. Van Leiden, even though he did try to drill us all full of holes. There you are. Drink that and make you feel better. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Lady Wyndham. Well, now I suppose all our troubles are over. <laughs> It. 
Now, I think you'd better put this on, as you mustn't get any more sun on your head after a shock like that. <laughs> Thank you very much. Good morning, Eva. Thank you. Bit of luck. This is the Bindar Tunnel. They'll never catch us now. It's two miles long and twists all the way. Come along, Captain Scott. Come along. Captain Scott. Well, that's a funny thing. Is he all right? He will be. Get me some water, Mr. Brady. I don't think he can have been hit. Oh, it looks like uh, just this wound. <laughs> That's just about the luckiest thing that ever happened to anybody. Oh! Keep oh. still, keep still. <laughs> oh, I, I tell you, this is a mug's game. I think perhaps you're right. What would you say if I put those tin soldiers back in the box? <laughs> I'd say you'd probably want to get them out again tomorrow. Don't tell me you've changed your opinion about soldiering. Well, let's just say I've, I've learned a couple of things on this journey. Well, let's just say we've both learned a couple of things on this journey. Yeah, I see. What did I tell you? It's the uniform. They all fall in the end. <laughs> 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 Message to Kalapur. Nine ten from Guram? No, it bloody well isn't. It's the last train from Azirabad. And stand to attention when you speak to a senior officer. Then John's all right. He's really all right. Yes, Sir John's quite all right. The rebels never broke into the port. Reinforcements got through, sir? Yes, last night. 
The attack broke up as soon as they knew you'd got the boy away. We'll meet again, Captain Scott. I shall be staying at Government House, and I know the Viceroy will be interested to hear of your part in this journey. Thank you, ma'am. Don't forget Mr. Bridey. He's got a kick like a mule. Oh, oh, that saved yes. a lot of us. Well, Gopta. See, sir? They said Victoria too old. No good except but for shunting. Let them speak now. She showed them. She certainly did. Shabash, Kumar. Shabash, Tata Sahib. Peters, we're a bit worried you wouldn't get to the Delhi conference. The government are very interested in this new field gun your people are putting on the market. Captain Scott, thank you for saving my life. You are my friend now. Well, I hope so. But you are British. Will I have to fight you? Good heavens, no. Why should you? My father said... Well, what does he say? I must fight the British to make them go away. I wish I could have driven the engine. Well, it looks as though you, you'll have to buy a little kitchen now. That's all the thanks you get. That's all the thanks we ever get. Be thankful you're living and trust your luck. March to your front like a soldier. Who said that? Man called Kipling. Another tea drinker. Well, you better try and find a home for young India. <laughs>